Okay, we're now into a part three of the series of how to find better make money day trading settings from your forward trading results. And we are now moving on to the IG platforms where I trade every single setting on a platform of its own compared to the FTMO approach of trading 10 settings on one account. Please watch part one and part two of this series before watching this section. Okay, we've dialed into another computer now and as you can see it has 12 platforms of the IG platform and I'm going to go through those settings one by one. Okay, so here's the Aussie and as you can see it's made a loss and then a nice profit of 300 and then a loss. So overall it's $100 up and how can we improve these results so firstly it's trading a with a trend strategy is buying with a trend it might look, not look like that but i had a look at the close-ups of that moving average and at, at times it was pointing up and over there so clearly again we have a late entry into this trend. Just look how late the entry is there. And in fact, that was not a late entry, but but the sell side was a little bit late. So using that rule of two hours earlier, two hours later, certainly if we moved the entries a little bit earlier, we would have had better results there. That would have been flat, but it would have gone down. Also, uh, if you look at this, the uh, signals were too late. There was a cross here. It only started selling quite late there. Signals uh, were a little bit too late. They was going sideways and then only started giving signals there. So what we want to do is we want the signals to go faster. And the way to do that is you increase the, the speed of the moving averages. And there you are. Now you've got signals where they are very fast. And very fast to get you in and that and even there you can see you could have got into the cell into a cell mode very quickly and uh, possibly reach the target so if we had two hours earlier now you in in the trend you go two hours earlier in the trend and two hours earlier maybe not but uh, you soon join the trend very quickly then we use the two hours after and we say oh yeah that would have worked there's the nice trend that we would have caught yes the uh, two hours later would have started, would have had a nice trend to start with there and two hours later a nice trend to start with there so that's another test that you can do two hours earlier two hours later but let's have a look if there are better times of the day to trade and and again you see there's some beautiful trends that have happened here happened there happened all over and even the previous days and we're saying so when are, when is the trending time of day for the Oz? so it looks like it's from about six o'clock to 1400 hours six to 1400 hours so let's have a look um there's six o'clock and there's 40 uh, there's almost 1400 hours so there's there's a trend there's a trend let's have a look over here uh, uh six o'clock and then look at that 1400 hours touch you all the way down there and here a little bit later there was six o'clock and then uh, then it would have taken you down this, so this day was a little bit later but overall we're looking most probably at a core trading period from about six to uh, 1400 hours that's actually the best time to trade this particular one and uh, we need fast entries into the fast entries and the way you get fast entries is fast moving averages the lot sizing appears to be a little bit too high because there's only two transactions there's a few transactions there I'd like to see slightly uh, lower lot sizing so it's lower lot sizing and I think that's about it for this particular one our, our targets seem to be good because if it has a good run 300 positive uh, bad run 100 negative and if we drop the lot sizing that will even improve those ratios and or well, everything looks pretty good for this one if we make those subtle changes Okay, so now we're on to the CAD Yen, and uh, you can see a gain for the first day, a gain for the second day, and uh, it looks like a gain for the second, third day too. 
So this one's done pretty well. Uh, one thing that's clear here is that the trading zone, you can see the trading zone that it's heading for is very small. So it's literally trading one or two hours a day. And it has actually caught the two hours very nicely. There's, there's the one, uh, one session that caught the uptrend on the CAD yen that caught the downtrend on the CAD yen hit the target and then unfortunately this one hasn't done too well but has uh, I, I can't I can't exactly tell let's see if we can increase the size um, so it did make a profit of $72 in that particular uh, say and it was stopped out by the trading window being ended that one reached the target and the previous one, the trading window had also ended. So uh, let's have a look at the uh, two hours earlier, two hours later approach. Let's see. So if uh, so, it's it in fact started on at, at 1400 hours. 14 uh, or 15, 1500 hours, 1500 hours seems to be and uh, uh, not a bad time to start. Um, going a little bit earlier yeah that would have been quite good if the moving averages were faster uh, that one a little bit earlier would have been good and that one was a, such a sideways day it wouldn't have mattered so a little bit earlier one hour earlier might be the way to go on this one i'll just make a note here one hour earlier um, we need we need faster moving averages and and let's see if we can see some patterns here so a bit of a choppy choppy one this there was a, a reversal at roughly three o'clock uh where were the big trends let's rather look for the big trends uh, this one was at 1500 hours <coughs> which seems to be the right time to trade here and that one was at two o'clock so it seems like those two times are pretty popular. Then that one is a new one. That's seven o'clock, and that one over there was fourteen hundred. It's basically fifteen hundred hours, and then that reversal happened at seventeen hundred hours, and we'll just carry on. And that one was at twenty twenty hundred hours. That one and then this one at two o'clock so we've got a, a few two o'clocks here and that one over there was seven o'clock seven o'clock and yeah not much all right so let's go backwards a little bit let's see if we can see any more patterns here oh there's a there's a definite trend change there at at 1400 hours and uh, there's a trend change there at eight o'clock okay so eight o'clock seven to eight and 14 to 15 appears to be uh, times but there's also a chunk here uh, of three three o'clock so <laughs> i'm actually gonna just write those times down so it's like three o'clock 1400 and seven o'clock are potential starting times for trends so um, that needs to be tested in future trading but certainly that's a, that's a nice visual observation uh, let's see how uh, because the period that it's open is only let's just have a look how long it is it's um, from 15 to 16 so it's literally trading one hour so uh, not not a bad period uh, to trade uh, it can most probably be opened up to two hours there's some nice trends there that last t two hours so uh, we could maybe look at uh, increasing the time frame increasing the period rather what else is there there's the time of day we we have identified the time of day the direction seems to be good with the trend uh, the uh, 
the targets seem to be not too bad. Look how it hit the 300 target and, and the 120 on the end of day. So if it catches a, a really good trend in that period, the one hour period, it can really hit the trends quite nicely. So overall, this, this strategy seems to be okay and uh, has resulted in almost a, um, a $500 profit. So when it's doing well, you don't want to fool around with it too much. You just refine it. Right, next one. Okay, this is the Euro Oz, and it's also a quick trading one because it only trades maybe in one hour. Let's just go and actually check the settings. It trades from 1400 to 1700, so that's three hour period. Uh, it, it has been opening only one or two trades, which means that the lot sizing is a little bit higher. I just want to check the whole lot sizing is uh, a point four lots maybe that should be 0.2 lots so uh, that's uh, one of the first notes i'll make here lot sizing down okay and uh, it is trading against the trend that it's buying against uh, the trend there it's selling against the trend and it's selling against the trend and uh, consequently it's, it's lost in all three days so quite clearly uh, the against the trend technique doesn't work but what is also quite clear is that if we use that uh, uh, two hour before and two hour after test you can clearly see that buying one hour earlier would have done the trick buying one hour earlier would have done the trick there and selling one hour earlier would have done the trick here so again we're saying um, that, uh, maybe move one hour earlier that's just the first observation and then we then we say maybe it shouldn't only trade for one one hour but uh, it should maybe trade there seem to be some really nice trends that are happening if you trade one hour earlier. In fact, uh, it looks like you could have traded a lot earlier than that, uh, a, a lot longer and earlier than that too. But the one hour, two hour, and then later, later wouldn't have worked very well anyway. So most probably not the way to go on this one. And then... Uh, let's have a look at the turning points. So the turning points here is 1300 hours. 1300 hours is the main turning point. There it was 2 o'clock. And then again at 7 o'clock. And, and over there at 4 o'clock. And over here possibly 1300 hours so it's a second 1300 hours and over there a one o'clock so there are a few there's a a group of turning points that happened uh, around about one o'clock two o'clock three o'clock and a few that happened at at 1300 hours let's just have a look at that one there that's seven o'clock so there's another group at seven o'clock which um, and then there is at 1500 hours which we haven't got before and yeah it seems uh, oh there's another turning point down here at one o'clock so it looks like one o'clock two o'clock is <laughs> our possible turning points and, and and this is a sample of four you need to actually do it a little bit more uh, in fact let's do it a little bit more while we yeah uh, you can see uh, uh, you can see there very early in the day four o'clock so so one to four o'clock is definitely a clump of reversal times and then around about seven o'clock again and uh, and around about 1300 so I'm just going to note that note that in our list here and that should be one o'clock seven o'clock and 1300 start times again most probably the um, the moving averages are a little bit loose so we can tighten them up a little bit for instance make this one um, make them tight like that so that they get into the trend a lot faster you can see there's some really beautiful trends that that are tradable and you what one has to do is just find the time of day where the 
EA can climb in and 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 catch these trends. And, and you don't have to catch a trend right in the beginning. If it's a long trend like that, you can just ride it for as long as as you uh, as the EA will allow you to trade. So there are, are some uh, nice times that we've identified. Uh, MAs need tightening. Uh, I, overall, I think the MAs need to be short. And uh, uh, risk return seems uh, we didn't see a risk return because all of these have been negative. So um, the risk return setting I think is 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 three to one. So that's fine. Um, and the period is too short. One hour is too short to trade. So we need to look at making the period a little bit longer. And a period maybe two to three hours. Okay, so that's that one. That's the Euro Oz. The Euro Oz was a little bit problematic in the previous analysis. So uh, interesting that that uh, might occur uh, again. So let's move on to the next currency. Okay, so this is the Euro CAD, and you can see it's had a loss there, loss there, but it made a really nice profit there. Has made the overall account positive. Um, if we look at here, it's it's bought in, uh, very late into this trend and then sold in the downtrend, sold very late into that trend, and sold very late into that trend. So coming back to our our conclusion here is that possibly uh, another hour earlier, around about there, would have been a better entry in this case. In in this case. Uh, an, uh, an hour or even an hour two, uh, earlier would have been better and in this case an hour or two earlier would have caught that uptrend so the two hour earlier two hour later test is a really good one uh, again this one uh, two hours later might have caught this uptrend over here two hours later would have caught that uptrend up here and two hours later, mm, maybe not been that successful. But certainly, we could look at the two hour, two hours earlier, two hours later option there. And looking at the numbers, there's a fair amount of open trades that get made. So uh, lot sizing appears to be fine. Uh, let's have a quick look at seeing if we can see any patterns with this indic with this currency. And I'll look at the previous day too. So um, the main turning points is uh, up there, right there, is at 1300 hours. Let's see that one, 1300 hours. And uh, the turning point here is actually seven. So it's 13, 13, seven. And uh, those are the major turning points. And then let's look at the, the, the less important ones, eight o'clock, which is close to eight o'clock. And then there was five o'clock. And that was uh, three o'clock. So that's th that one. Um, this one, this turning point here it was seven o'clock. I might have recorded that one. Um, nothing. Uh, there's another turning point at uh, twelve o'clock. So thirteen hundred or twelve to thirteen hundred seems to be a good turning point. There's another one which is yeah thirteen hundred. Okay, so so thirteen hundred appears to be. A, a time to investigate and refine entries too. Um, just going to have a look at that. 1300 hours. Um, also, maybe tighten up on the moving averages. Although they're not bad, they're not bad at all during that period. That that would have been a really successful. That would have been a little bit later. Would have been good. That would have been good a little bit later. So a little bit later seems to be a good time to trade. Yeah, that was. That was too early, and uh, and as you say, you know, the ideal thing is to actually uh, find the start of trends uh, going back a few a week or two, and start getting a idea of when patterns develop for these currencies. So let's move on from uh, that was the Euro CAD. I think we've uh, some summarized that one. We'll move on to the next one.
Okay, so the next currency is the euro, which has really not performed very well. It's uh, had three losses in a row. And looking at it visually, I think we can see a couple of areas of improvement. Certainly, it looks like the trading should start two hours later. In, uh, instead of starting over there, it should have started where, where that trend happened and uh, instead of starting there that trend and we don't know about today because today has already been stopped out so the the, the whole setup here appears to be very poor um, so certainly uh, it has been starting at let's see four o'clock and trading to ten o'clock never really got there so the other observation here is that the lot sizing is too big Let's have a look at the lot sizing. Uh, where is the lot? Size? Uh, it's trading one full lot, so that's definitely too big. Uh, we need to reduce the lot sizing maybe to uh, 0.05 for the euro. Um, the trading time is also a bit messed up. It should be uh, instead of uh, uh, four o'clock, it should be around about seven. And year seven and uh, let's have a look at, at any other days um, oh this is the fourth day so so the, the, today is already and then there is round about let's see seven so seven is definitely the starting point for this currency seven hours um we could play around and look for for better times but uh, seven visually is just there's the trend there's the trend there's the trend and it hasn't worked out for and let's just see uh seven seven will still catch quite a big trend there and the other time for oops other times for trends could be there which is 12 12 o'clock so 12 but seven se se seems to be the one uh, here's a very early trend again uh, if you started at seven you still caught that trend and uh, 12 and that was 12 so 12 is 7 and 12 appears to be the times to trade this one this is for the IG so remember this is uh, for this particular platform the times that apply that almost looks like the a uh, non forms payroll announcement there um, seven let's see what seven would look like on on this one yeah there we are and it caught that downward so seven is definitely the the time to trade on this particular one you need we would need much tighter moving averages um, in fact I'll just change the white one a moving average uh, that one would be about four much tighter moving averages and to get us into the trend here and again you know if we had we had more time we could do more of a, a time of day exercise to see what time of day is. but again look at that seven o'clock just seemed to be the time of day when things start moving there's seven o'clock again boom look at that move so um so a very, very quick visual uh, look is firstly um, let's just see we've said that the lot sizing is too small or too big so we've increased the loss so that's why it got stopped out so quickly and also um, the time was too early we need to start at, at 7 or maybe even 12 would be another alternative start so to catch those that the kickback on these trends so very quick analysis for the euro and some nice improvements that we can make there. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so now we are on the pound CAD. And so it sells against the trend. It's, it buys against the trend and buys against the trend. So it's, it's a reversal strategy that is used here. Um, again, you know, if we apply the two hours earlier, two hours later, it would work if it was two hours earlier later over here and two hours later over there there's the trend it would have caught and this one would also have caught that one so again the reversal for the reversal i would say we could possibly look at uh two hours later uh but 
for the with the trend trade we could look really uh, uh, we could look at two uh, two hours earlier so if we were buying two hours earlier into that trend we would uh, do be successful if we were selling and there's a really good one selling into that trend would be very successful and if we were selling into that trend so again visual ob observation really is very quick to tell what needs to be done so a reversal is two hours later uh, with a trend uh, later and then with a trend is two hours earlier and then what you would do is uh, change the moving averages to show um, to, to make sure that you get into the trend at the time when it reaches so for instance uh, you want to get into that trend quite quickly so you would um, uh, uh, not have such a, a wide moving out you'd have a very tight one I don't know what the other one is but there's a very tight one that it will get you into that trend get you into that trend very quickly time of day is critical here again and um, let's have a look at a uh, let's have a quick look at, at consistency of of time of day trend changing um, I'm just going to oops in fact that's a a good way of doing it just minimizing the size um, all, all right so um, let's have a look at some of the trend changing times so that was eight o'clock this is the pound CAD so um, eight o'clock um, the one the one we've looked at for that particular day eight o'clock and then at the top here there was a one a change at 1400 hours so here there was a change at nine o'clock and then it came down and stabilized so there was nothing there was a bit of a ch ch change here at 1400 hours kickback so let's have a look so there's the start of a trend that was 1400 hours and there was a bit of a trend in nine o'clock so we're getting quite a bit of consistency coming out of here what was that change nine around about nine o'clock it's a it's sort of ten almost close to 10 but nine o'clock would do and then there is 1700 hours so that's the only one that stood out a little bit and then that one is seven o'clock okay so we, we, we're getting some really good consistencies in terms of times with this particular currency the pound cad uh, it seems like nine o'clock is a really good time to try and catch uh, uh, trends um uh, trends and uh, and 1400 hours is a good time to um, to also catch trends out oh, there we go 1400 caught that that trend so certainly the note here is to look at nine o'clock and 1400 uh, hours for trending getting to them quickly use fast moving averages and uh, the lot sizing let's just have a quick look at the lot sizing aspect um there's only one two two negatives there mm, a few more there to see if we can spot the previous one two negatives there so what what this is saying is that the lot sizing is too too high we need to uh, reduce the lot sizing to uh, what is it now uh, uh, 0.2 so we actually need 0.1 okay we had the pound yen and it's had a loss initially and then another loss in uh, second loss and then it made a 250 pip profit a uh, dollar profit so it actually is positive and let's have a look at how we could have improved this trading let's add the moving averages so let's work out what strategy it's using it's starting to trade at about 1500 hours uh yeah that's 1600 hours and 1600 hours 1600 hours so it's starting to trade quite late in the day and it trades against a trend so both the moving average pointing up it was trading against the trend there both were pointing down trading against the trend there and then at this point they were both pointing down at that particular point when those entries were entered into and those were buys and those three buys resulted in a 
nice gain there. Overall, very quickly looking at this, um, uh, the, uh, the, the lot sizing is way too big. Uh, I think the lot sizing over here, let me see, is 0.04. I think we need re um, reduced lot sizing. Lots, 0.02. So, so that's the first observation I can very quickly make on uh, on this particular one, and um, it it does look like we're trading too late in the day. So, if we if we look at when the trends occ occurred over this period, that's eight o'clock. That that trend going up there, that is nine o'clock. That trend, but it actually started at the top there, which is around about eight o'clock. Uh, same thing here, it started a little bit earlier, and then this one here was six o'clock, seven, eight o'clock. So, so it looks like this this currency likes trending at eight o'clock. So, let's just go on and make sure that that's the case. Um, I'm just going to fold this up and, and allow us to scroll. Um, in this case, let's see when. That was eight o'clock when that trend started. Uh, this one is, was was already in a a nice trend at eight o'clock. But there's the continuation of the trend. There's a eight o'clock, and there was the trend there. And uh, let's have a look what time that was. That was nine o'clock, a little bit later. But there was a start. So eight o'clock is definitely uh, eight to nine is definitely the way to trade the the pound New Zealand. Uh, so I'm, I'm putting that down. And I'll compare it with the notes of the pound of Zealand that we analyzed in the um, previous session. That's definitely the time when trends happen. Um, and also uh, the approach here would be to trade it with a trend rather uh, against the trend. So change the strategy to with, with the trend. Let's do the two hours earlier. Um, not, that wouldn't have helped there. Two hours earlier, no, uh, buys wouldn't have helped there. And two hours earlier, yeah, uh, no, it, it would have happened there. Yes, yes, could possibly. That would have been two hours earlier. You could have entered buys over there, which might have helped this particular one. So you, you would have get, would have had two losses and a profit, as, as was the case here. Uh, let's do the two hours later. Uh, that those were sales. Yes, that that would have been that it would have worked. Two hours later, um, that would have been a sell. Yes, that would have worked. And two hours later, uh, that those would have been buys, and they might have worked. So uh, you have to play around with those ones, the two hour before, two hour after approach. Also, um, maybe what you want to do is catch the, uh, and let's have a look at the actual turning points in the market. Uh, th these seem to be early. That's, that's, that's round about five o'clock. Let's have a look at the top there. That's, uh, that's, that's about seven o'clock. All right, so it's five o'clock, seven o'clock. Big, but those are big trend changes. There's one there, seven o'clock. So around about seven o'clock, uh, looks like a Frankfurt currency. This almost um, looks like the times that uh, things turn to. Yeah, it's, it's trended all day long. So um, you know, you can look at seven o'clock. You would have just joined the trend there. Um, let's have a look over here. Seven o'clock, uh, little trend there, not much of a one. Seven o'clock seems to be, yep. Seven o'clock, there we are. So there was a bit of a trend there, but there was another reversal there at around about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Let's just check 11 o'clock on this one. No, nothing much there. Oh, that was trending at 11 o'clock anyway. You can see this is a really nice trending um, e, uh, EA, I mean a currency rather. So 7 o'clock it was already trending and 11 o'clock it was already trending. So so 7 o'clock is definitely this currency's time. I'm looking at it from that perspective. And, um, 
and the the moving averages haven't really dis, uh, discouraged uh, with the trend trading so that's um, that, that that's worked pretty well except there that's seven o'clock you would not have gone into a sell at that point you would have gone into a sell later and uh, therefore the moving averages are a little bit slow and should be made a bit faster so the moving averages just review moving average set settings and uh, yeah that is it i think let's move on to the uh, next currency and as you can see it's following a strategy of uh, of uh, uh, as you can see it's following an against the trend strategy so it's selling into a trend selling into the trend and buying into a downtrend and in all three cases it's created losses so what we're saying is that all we need to do is reverse the direction and we would have made profits and in fact that is in fact the case if you just reverse the direction you would have nice profits in all cases so that's a very quick visual re review um, in fact I'm just going to say reverse direction and uh, we then have to follow our uh, process of saying uh, what about an, uh, two hours earlier um, or two hours later so we say two hours earlier that trend was in place two hours earlier that trend was in place and two hours earlier that trend wasn't a place but it was going sideways so so that uh, is um, I don't think it's worth actioning that, but certainly noting that it would have been um, not not bad two hours earlier. And now let's have a look at two hours later. We say two hours later, no, nothing much there. Two hours later would have put us into a trend going down. Too much. Two hours later would have put, put us into a trend going down again. Not a bad idea, but let's have a look at some of the trend changing times. So. Um, there's some clear trend changing times over here. That's uh, clearly about four four o'clock, and then later on, and then it's consolidated, and then later on, uh, around about eight o'clock, it started trending again. So that's for that day. That day, the trend started very early, two o'clock, and then around about there, it's, it really started trending, which is eight around about eight o'clock. Uh, interesting and then that was at 11 o'clock okay so we getting some patterns going and then it stopped trending around about 1500 hours and let's have a look at the next day the next day that trend started at seven o'clock and and went all the way down there and then that trend which is quite a nice one started at 12 o'clock okay so we've got a little bit uh, again some some uh, times that were very good so uh, I would say the uh, seven o'clock to eight o'clock time is, is a good one and then the round about 12 o'clock is another good uh, starting point for trends um, the a number of open deals before it was stopped out is good so so uh, it means the lot sizing is good and everything looks fine if we change the time of day there and the direction <laughs> reverse the direction I don't think uh, the reverse direction is good for this one it's got some nice trends that it that it builds up and must probably need a little bit more work on the time of day but they it seems to be a, a consistency look at that those two days almost seem to be a mirror image of each other so there, there's an element of consistency when these trends occur and so let's move on to the next currency okay so the next currency is the pound usd and it has had a loss then a nice profit of 250 and then a loss so it is overall a uh, positive it is however trading against the trend you can see it's buying into a downtrend buying into a downtrend and selling into an uptrend very late incredibly late into the into the session so the time of day seems to be completely incorrect uh, to trade this particular one um, and let's have a look just increase the size there see if we can see more of the next few days I can actually do it that way so so let's again just have a quick look at um, whether 
uh, trading before the time would have helped in 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 this particular case not if you bought over there nothing would have uh, and and if we bought there nothing would have helped there and if we had sold over there nothing would have helped so the t before the time didn't help the after if we had sold over here maybe if you bought maybe and if we had bought a little bit later maybe yeah ma that might even have, have gone positively but let's first focus on getting the uh, time of day see if we can get better uh, better times of day so that uh, uh, trend that we saw there was at eight o'clock that we saw there and that seems like it, it was one solid trend for the whole day um, again the same thing the previous day uh, that was seven o'clock so eight between eight and seven seems to be the time to trade this one that one uh, again seven o'clock and there was the trend going up and um, there's the start of the trend uh, seven o'clock downwards so seven o'clock seems to be uh, without even blinking uh, here's one that's a little bit late 230 but let's have a look at seven o'clock seven o'clock was actually the start of that trend so seven o'clock is by far the pounds time to to trade um even over uh, the previous next day seven o'clock there was a nice trend downwards there so seven o'clock is definitely the way to go for the for this currency got it completely wrong in the optimization um and uh, let's have a look um, uh, uh, because it's you want to get into the trend quickly possibly be that yellow line should be a little bit tighter so we're going to just have a look at um at at um, and it will then seven and short uh, MA. Okay, and what else can we say about that? The, uh, the seven o'clock just stood out as the time. Could be wrong. You you'd need to analyze it a little bit further. But certainly, I don't think we need to look any further. The time of day uh, is was wrong. The direction was also wrong. It's better to trade a trending currency like this with a trend. Uh, the moving averages need to be a bit tighter. Uh, lot sizing appears to be too tight. Too but let's have a look at the times that it traded. Uh, 1600 to and it's two hours. Yep, the lot sizing is too small, too uh, too too big, too uh, too high. It's 0 0.6 lots. We definitely need uh, a tighter lot sizing of uh, 0.3 or 0.4 lot sizing. And. Uh, yeah, I think that's all we can say about this particular one. Let's move on to the next one. So the next currency that we're trading here is the uh, Canadian dollar. And okay, so it it, it is in fact a, a, a with a trend technique. It's it's selling into a downtrend, buying into an uptrend and then uh, buying into an uptrend here and uh, i think one thing that stands out quite clearly is that the lot sizing uh, is much too high and i just want to see what the lot sizing is it's a point one point one lots so uh, it's one lot so the lot sizing is way too high it, it needs to go down to almost a five point point five lots uh, even more than that uh, possibly because you can't get lock knocked out in one trade like that that that's that's sort of not not the thing that should happen and that's 1500 so it starts trading at 1500 not a bad time to trade um uh, there it, it hit the profit very really quickly and again only three trades so that's why i'm saying the lot sizing appears to be way too high uh, you, sh you should have about uh, four or five trades before it hits so so that was good that was a loss and that was a loss so overall nice pr nicely profit uh, profitable um and if we had lower lot sizing those trades in fact would have gone positive because you can see the trend continued and and the lot with with half the lot sizing those will have remained active uh, let's have a look at 
Yeah, overall, not not bad, um, except, again, uh, let's do the two hour earlier, two hour later. If we were two hours earlier, this would have been an even more successful. If we were two hours earlier, certainly that would have been more successful, and two hours earlier, that would have been more successful. So certainly the two hours uh, earlier uh, consideration should be made. Um, two hours... This is actually one of the easy, uh, easier uh, uh, currencies to trade. So the the trend actually started there at twelve o'clock, uh, at and, and then at seven o'clock. So seven o'clock, twelve o'clock. Um, that that was around about thirteen hundred hours, and that was uh, eight o'clock. So. Um, and that was 1400 hours and um, the small one at seven o'clock which is eight o'clock so the, the Canadian will um, mostly jump around about the opening of the US market so this is a, a an easier currency to trade I would say align it with the open of the US market um, get into the trend quickly because there's the moving averages should be tight get into the trend very quickly and uh, the, the risk return ratio should be um, 3 to 1 like it is uh, but uh, in this case I think the lot sizing was a little bit high and from visual look seeing it you can actually see that um, uh, it would have been more successful especially that stop out over there to have a stop out on one transaction is a little bit um, unrealistic so the lot sizing is too high okay so that's the CAD and uh, let's move on to the next one so okay so the next currency is the Aussie yen and immediately from visual inspection you can immediately see that the lot sizing was is totally inappropriate because it is being stopped out on one one open trade and two open trades so, so uh, first thing to do the lot sizing should be almost uh, it's it, it i see it, it it was at one lot uh, you should that should go right down to possibly 0.3 lots uh, it's it, it's uh, the lot sizing totally wrong in this particular case uh, so uh, very difficult to get a conclusion on this one uh, because it, very little trading has happened but what has happened is that the sale happened very late uh, very late in this particular uh, deal and again if you look at the one hour earlier approach possibly that that trend could have been caught uh, one hour early certainly that trend could have been caught and that trend could have been caught so again one hour earlier might might be the way to go yeah um, lots, um, and one hour earlier just that's a quick observation you just need to analyze it a little bit further um, and let's have a look at some turning points in the uh, market so the turning times uh, there's 730 let's see uh, seven uh, seven um, let's see what seven looks like on this one seven it's a bit of a messy one so seven uh, uh, seven look good for let's see uh, let's do another one Yeah, seven. Look at look at that trend. That seven. So seven o'clock is definitely the time for this particular EA. Uh, looks pretty good. Um, it is. Uh, yeah, it is an Asian uh, currency with another Asian currency. So that's why the trends are so good at seven o'clock. And um, there's the seven o'clock. Yeah, seven o'clock immediately jumps out as the as the way to go on this one. Uh, Um, again the lot sizing was completely wrong um, uh, the, uh, and if you're going to trade seven o'clock you need your moving averages really shortened uh, considerably uh, 
yeah, that's a bit, that looks a bit severe, but um, it, it is that you need to catch those kind of trends considerably. Um, okay. All right, I, I think uh, that's okay for the Aussie yen. Uh, we can do a bit of more time of day, but I think 7 o'clock definitely stood out as the way to go with the Aussie yen. Yeah, 7 is definitely in the middle of a lot of trends. Oh, that was a nice one. Oh, it was a little bit later for uh, eight o'clock. Um, yeah, seven again, then very nice trend there. Um, that was a little bit late. Uh, there's seven o'clock. I caught that trend. So seven o'clock uh, is the start of uh, quite a nice trend. Uh, trends are development uh, with the make money day trader the moving averages if they are quick will be pointing in the direction of the trend right so last one for uh, the ig analysis and there we are it's already set up for us it's the uh, cad yen and and let's have a look that the profit was 300 it's shot out of the uh, started out very nicely then it ran into a loss and then went into a loss here so unfortunately uh, it is still nicely 100 pips up but let's have a look at what's happened here i'll add the the um period separators gives us an idea of when these trades are happening these are these are later into the day and it is the cad yen so uh, and we'll add the moving averages it's a three and fifty six three Oh, yeah, I've got that, and the, oh, the other one is already there, so moving averages are there. Okay, so uh, this is a with a trend strategy that's being used, buying into the, uh, with a trend, uh, there's selling into the trend there, and then selling into the trend there. Um, again, very quick observation, the uh, number of negative deals shows that the lot sizing is too high the lot sizing in this case was 1.2 way too high so the lot sizing must be reduced to most probably 0.4 would be a more appropriate lot sizing again something that you uh, mostly pick up from visual visual uh, evaluations the um it also only traded two hours a day very short period but you can see there's only three trades three trades there three trades there only one there so it, it hardly traded so uh, it's because of the high lot sizing that occurred and look how quickly it hit because of the high lot sizing it hit its target a, a little bit too quickly and hit its losses a little bit too quickly Fortunately, that was a very strong trend, so the, the targets were hit nicely. So uh, I think that's the overall analysis. So let's have a look at the uh, time of day uh, factors. And uh, it's very, it's quite a messy uh, currency. This I'm going to actually reduce it a little bit to make the turning points a little bit easier to see. And uh, uh, there, there is a turning point there. Uh, oh, and then. Um, before I do that, the normal two two hours before and two hours after the, two hours before wouldn't have two hours would have been great there, but there it would have been fantastic, and there it would have most probably caught a little bit of a downtrend. And now two hours after, not that good. Maybe a new new trend there, and maybe a new trend there. So again, that two hour before and two hour after a test is a good one to do direction mm, reverse reverse no that would, this was very messy so really difficult to say what could have happened there but i think the lot sizing might have made this survive in some way or the other okay so let's have a look if we can find turning points in the market yeah and i'm going to just start on a clear day so so that there was a turning point which was 1600 hours and uh, then 
Yeah, there's a turning point. Uh, that's r roughly 1,300 hours. And then there was a turning point. That was uh, 7 o'clock. And then there was a turning point, uh, which was 2 o'clock. Uh, then here, uh, or let's start there rather, that's a good, uh, that was 1300 hours, maybe 1400, and there was a turning point there, which was 3 o'clock. And then, uh, uh, okay, so over here, that's actually a, a breakout point, which was 1600 hours, and um, there was a, a, a reversal point, which was 1400 hours. Okay, so we, we're building up actually a, a nice profile for this one. Um, oops, not jumping around. Um, I think I've noted that one. That was 8, eight o'clock. Fourteen hundred hours. Look, uh, this particular one looks like fourteen hundred hours is actually the um, the uh, the fourteen. Yeah, that's it. There's that. Uh, so fourteen hundred hours seems to be the uh, time to investigate as as a possible starting point of trends. Um, and uh, look, we can investigate that visually by looking at it, or you can do a lot more back testing, just visual back testing. In other words, open the chart, look at what I'm doing now, just find 1400 hours. Oh, yeah, that started a trend. It's, you just go back and you say, oh, yeah, that started a trend. So that's how you visually back test uh, very quickly. Let's see if that. That was four. Uh, that was thirteen hundred. So that, uh, that mm, almost almost started. That was the point of the trend start. So um, and let's have a look at that one. Fourteen hundred. Now, you, as you can see, very quickly in the small space of time, we found fourteen hundred to be a pretty good number for starting trends for this particular currency, the pound, the uh, the CAD yen.